Okay, I'll admit it. I'm a total sugar addict. But at least I'm not alone. My whole family has a sweet tooth. So for Christmas gifts this year, I decided to make custom candy dispensers. Keep watching to learn how easy it is to make one for yourself. I used walnut for this project, but I chose standard size dimensional lumber so you can make it easily out of regular one by material from your local Home Depot. Starting with the one by three boards, I began to trace out a shape that would cause the candy to funnel down to the center. Then I used a jigsaw to cut the shape out. After cutting the first side piece, I used it as a template to trace onto the second one by three, which I also cut using a jigsaw. The candy is distributed from a circle in the center of the two side boards that spins around. I used a piece of scrap to make cutting the circle a little easier. I temporarily tacked the sides and a scrap block to the one x five backer board using a 23 gauge pin nailer. I found the center between the sides and then used DIY circle jig and a palm router to cut out the circle. Just remember to work slowly and to take multiple shallow passes. I stopped just before cutting through the circle so I wouldn't damage the backer board behind it. I then carefully used a chisel to pry the pieces loose. While you're watching this video, give it a quick thumbs up. The one unfortunate problem of using a router to cut this circle is the one quarter inch wide bit made the inner circle too small to be able to use as the distributor. I cut out a second wooden circle just barely smaller than the recess between the sides. I needed to create a small notch that would grab the candy and drop it down. I used a one and three eighths inch Forstner bit to drill a circle through the distributor slightly in from the outside edge. This drill bit is really handy to have around because it's the standard size for a lot of cabinet hinges. Next, I gave all the pieces a good sanding and moved on to assembly. I applied type on two to all the connecting faces and then clamped the side pieces on top of the backboard. Once those were dry, I moved on to the bottom and the lid. I scrapped the exact length on the boards and then used a miter saw to carefully cut them to length. I used a little trick to make sure that the bottom didn't move during glue up. I first applied my tight bind too, but then I followed up with a couple of dabs of a quick setting CA glue called Rapid Fuse. That way I could place the bottom board exactly where I wanted it to and that CA glue would help hold it in place while I got the clamps on. While the bottom was drying, I started to measure my acrylic face. I used inexpensive 1 inch thick acrylic. I placed it on top of the dispenser and then marked out the dimensions. I carefully cut the acrylic to the right dimensions with my miter saw. I know it's tempting to remove, but keep the protective plastic coating on both sides as long as you can. I moved the acrylic face into place and then used a permanent marker to trace the opening at the bottom of the dispenser. I then used a jigsaw to cut out the shape that I had traced. You gotta be a little careful with acrylic. If you go too fast, it melts, but if you go too slow, it chips. So you may need to experiment with cutting speed. Next, I clamped the acrylic in place on top of the dispenser and marked where the screws were going to be located. I used a 1 16th inch drill bit to drill five holes on each side through the acrylic and into the wood beneath. While the acrylic was still clamped in place, I found the center of the dispenser and marked that with a marker as well. I removed the acrylic and clamped it to a scrap piece of wood. I then drilled a 7 16th inch hole to accommodate a handle for the dispenser. I discovered really quickly when I went to drill the hole for the handle in the dispenser that a brad point bit was not the way to go. I quickly switched to a 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I wanted something really clean and simple for the handle. And I happened to have a little bit of scrap 3 8 inch brass rod from my brass handled cutting board left over. I filled the hole with more rapid fuse and then held the brass handle in place while it dried. 
Next, I tackled the hinges that would hold the lid on. First, I found the hinges dimensions. Then I marked the top back edge of the back panel. I used a chisel to remove a recessed area about 1 8 of an inch thick. As you can see, I need a lot of practice with my chisels. The notches definitely were not perfect. Any suggestions to make them a little cleaner next time? I used another little trick to align the lid with the hinges. I placed the hinges inside the notches and then added a small drop of CA glue to the top side. Then I carefully aligned the lid and pressed down. When I pulled the lid off, the hinges were already attached exactly where they needed to be screwed down. I pre-drilled and then hand drove tiny little brass screws to hold the hinges in place. At this point, I gave all the parts a good hand sanding to prepare them for finish. Remember, this candy dispenser is going to be holding something edible, so I recommend only using a finish that is food safe. Just like I would on a cutting board, I applied two coats of mineral oil and then followed up with a coat of beeswax. Finally, I got to remove the protective coating off the acrylic sheet. I dropped the round distributor in place and then placed the acrylic face on top. I connected the acrylic to the wood using one half inch brass screws driven by hand. All that was left to do was to fill it up with candy. I discovered this dispenser works best with any round-ish, hard-ish kinds of candy like Skittles, M&Ms, things like that. The hinges hold the lid in place pretty well, but I'm kind of thinking maybe I should add a couple of magnets to hold it shut. What do you think? Did I tell you I like candy? Here's a couple more videos that you guys might like to check out. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Pneumatic Datic channel. Thanks for watching guys.